These are things that are constantly impacting people's plans. You need to understand the basics of how interest rates could impact you. Each financial decision is not in a silo by itself. It has to be looked at and how it relates to something else in your plan. And most people are not looking at the big picture. The big picture. This is John Smallwood. I am back on Money Isn't Podcast. I'm really excited about the topic today. I have another really good guest with me. This is Dexter. Dexter is a Bijan Shih Tzu. He's, I think he's, he's 12. I think he's going to be 13 in November. And he is a a staple here at the office for different time periods. Um, when he doesn't bark, it's all fantastic, okay? But I wanted to, today, we're gonna talk about, I had an unbelievable experience last week. I had the opportunity to, to have a Zoom call, to be a participant on a Zoom call with Jeremy Signal, Siegel of Wisdom Tree and UPenn and Wharton, and you see him on CNBC all the time. And it was a fabulous 20 minute conversation, that presentation, and then a little bit of question and answer. And it was, it was really, I didn't expect it to be the way it was. And it was about, I wasn't sure what he was gonna discuss, and it was what should the Fed do? And it happened to be the day before the Fed was gonna announce that it may or may not you know, reduce rates, right? And the perspective that I was able to glean from it was a little bit different than, than, than what I was looking at it and, and the factors of what I was looking for, okay? So what I wanted to do was share this information with you because I thought this is really, really important and it has a ripple effect that's going to go through a couple of different um areas in your wealth plan and that there's certain possible outcomes that could dictate very different um, impacts, right? Because I always visualize something happens. There's an event, right? It's like throwing a rock into a pond. There's a splash and then there's a ripple effect. And that ripple effect is we all know that if I throw a rock into a pond, those ripples, whether they're visual or not, will go all the way across that lake, right? And they have an impact. They have an impact on erosion. They have an impact on all kinds of things, right? You know, might release a fly hatch that was ready to go, right? There's so many things that could happen when a ripple comes into a plan. But one of the things that's really interesting is his perspective. And what I learned from this was that the two measures that the Fed is looking at is have we have we, do we have inflation down to like around a 2% number and is unemployment at a level that's reasonable around 4.2? And if those two numbers are at the same spot, then the Fed should begin to reduce the Fed funds rate. Now, the Fed funds rate is currently at 5.38%. You're seeing a chart, this was from JP Morgan, this was last Thursday or Friday, that this, actually Friday, that this was Thursday's market close. So what we're looking at on this chart is the history from 1993 where the Fed, the overnight lending rate is, okay? And that's what banks are lending money on, that's what credit card interest rates, that's what's affecting mortgages, it's, it's affecting a whole series of things in the economy, okay? And what you're seeing is there is market expectations in green, and there are FOMC year-end estimates, and the trend is saying this should come down. And what we've been talking about is why are the rates so high? Why are they, and why hasn't certain things happened? Like with interest rates so high, why hasn't the real estate market been under a lot more pressure? Meaning prices needed to come down, but they're not coming down. They're actually accelerating in certain markets. And one of those issues is there's not a supply. If there was a greater amount of supply, meaning more houses on the market, there, you'd have price reductions, which you're seeing in some markets, right? Not in all markets. Um, so Dexter's going to leave me at this moment. Let me put him down. And 
there he is. So what was interesting is, so what he brought up is inflation. I'm going to skip ahead in this for a second because I want to come back. Inflation right now is at about 2.8%, right? Core CPI is about 2.8%. And what they're looking at is they think it's going to come down. Now, what Jeremy Siegel said was that if you took shelter out, which is one of the biggest issues right now in inflation, which is cost of housing, right? It's actually 1.8%. So everything seems to be in really good order for the Fed to dramatically reduce interest rates quickly. But he said that's probably not going to happen, okay, quickly. But he could see this Fed funds rate coming down to a much lower number. Now, what the ripple effect of that is, the short-term, this is driving up short-term rates. Short-term rates are high, and as that Fed fund rate comes down, what will happen is what everybody's enjoying right now is the money market funds at, you know, four and a half to five, five point one two percent. Those numbers, as those short term rates come down, those rate returns should come down, not you know, should. Right. So what was interesting, though, is when you look at the 10 year Treasury right now, the 10 year Treasury is three point eight percent. A couple months ago, before anything moved, before any discussion, those rates were close to four and a half, four point six percent. So, expectations have been driving that down to about three point eight percent. But what's interesting is, historically, when you look at this chart, the blue line is the market yield on the U.S. Treasury rate, and the black line is the Fed funds rate. H historically it trades about 1% lower than the 10-year Treasury. So right now, we're talking about 5.3 on the Fed funds rate versus 3.8, which means it's you know, significantly higher. And that, when you look at this chart, the black line being higher than the blue line, there are a couple of periods, 2000 to 2002, where that was there, 2006 into 2008 was a little bit higher. Those were pretty stressful times in our markets, if you think about it, right? So those were the quantitative easing, those were Fed actions, those were things, you know, doing this. But you traditionally do not have this trading like that for as long as it is. So either interest rates need to come up, the 10-year treasury, or the Fed fund rate needs to come down. Now, if inflation is good and unemployment is good, then Fed funds rates should come down and you should get to par. Now, when that happens, interest rates declining could, could improve the bond returns, meaning the bonds will, you know, higher yielding bonds will appreciate over that time frame. But once, they, once that happens, you know, now we're in a low interest rate environment. So all the short-term paper as it rolls off, which that's what the money markets are doing, you, you should see a trend of those things down. You should also see mortgage rates trending down, which in, when you start to think about it, how will that impact my wealth plan? What's the impact of lower interest rates? Depending upon where you are in the cycle, if I have a half a million dollars sitting in cash right now at 5%, 5 25000 18 months ago, that was virtually nothing, right? It was 24 months ago, it was 1% and less. So this feels really good. If I have a mortgage and my mortgage rate is 7, so many people now have 7, 7.5% 7 mortgage rates, which is back like 30 years, right, in time frame. I mean, I remember my first house that I bought in 92 or 3, 94, 94, interest rate was 7 and a quarter. And that was low, comparative to the last 15 years prior to that, right? And then they went all the way down to 2.75, 2.5%. Somebody listening to this probably has a 1.9, because there was a period where they were really low, right? And 
So if you bought a house a few years ago and interest rates come down, the odds of you being able to refinance that at a low rate become dramatically higher, which makes the house a lot more affordable. And, you know, technically you could say if interest rates come down, house values could continue to, to go up, which is one of the concerns that they have is, are we going into a bubble there, right? So as we went through this, I thought what was really interesting is I wanted to pull this chart out from a visual like what, from 21, you know, green on this chart is energy. Energy is now, oil's come down, pump, you know, gas at the pump. I have a boat, small boat. I had a big boat. In 22, was it 22? Yeah, July, July. Well, when I bought the boat, fuel prices, I, here's what, what I remember. I came up the, the coast and I was paying diesel fuel that was $3 a gallon. I took the boat 18, 19 months later down to Florida and I was paying seven bucks. I hit Charleston and I hit $7 a gallon. I was crazy. It's back, I was on the docks the other day, it was $3.89 here in New Jersey. I'm like, that's a roller coaster. Right. So that inflationary, that's deflation. And what you're seeing is green down here is in a deflationary environment because fuel prices are dropping, which should be a ripple effect through other things. Shelter rents are going up. Right. You know, when you look at shelter, it's not just rents, but people, when they look at that calculation, they're looking at that calculation and saying, even if you own your own home, there's the real estate taxes. There's all those components. What would be the effective rate of the house that you're living in? Okay, that's part of that shelter in you know sheltering thing. Food and home expenses, dining and recreation. I was having so many conversations with people over the last couple of weeks about being out and how expensive it is to dine out now, and how much smaller the portions are coming. Right, and it's like we're out the other night, thirty nine bucks for a beautiful piece of salmon, and it was like I'm like, where is it? I don't even see it. Is it on my plate? I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> All right? And they're like, it's so expensive. So when you look at this chart, there's all these wonderful things. Now, this lowering the Fed funds rate will have positive and negative impacts on your wealth plan, depending upon who you are, what you've purchased. If you're 30 years old and you bought a house at 7.5% and you don't have the capacity or the capability to pay that loan off, Interest rates rising will be like a breath of, I mean, interest rates declining will be a breath of fresh air. When should you refinance, right? It really depends on the individual, but typically when that rate becomes a half a point to 75 basis points lower, which is 0.75%, mathematically that could make sense. But where's it going, right? And you're never going to time the bottom, you may, because you get lucky every once in a while, right? But I believe that's something that you should be really hunting and watching and looking at. My concern is, do valuations of homes fall and I can't refinance, which, which we saw in 08, 09, and 10, and 11, and 12. People, homes were underwater until 2016, 17, when houses started to come back up, and then they really came back up in the pandemic era, right? So we do have bubbles in the prices. Now, Siegel went on to talk about what are the risks, right? He, the stock market, which is what he spent most of his time talking about, you know, the average PE is in the 21 range at this time, price to earnings ratio, right? So the earnings are X, the price of the company X, boom, it's a 21 multiple. That's relatively good. He sees it as not being overvalued because when his reference point was in 08, 09, PEs were higher. In the dot-com bubble, they were dramatically higher. Now, you do see some really big companies right now that have had dramatic run-ups, and the price to earnings ratio is 40, 50. Those stocks are growth stocks and they're way out in front. Interest rates declining will dramatically help value in mid company and small company stocks because those profits, they're lending. When they borrow money, it's typically floating rate money. It's usually prime overnight fund rate plus 200 basis points, 300 basis points. So when it was really low, their cost of borrowing was low. Now it went up, and that puts pressure on profitability. This will bring profitability down, potentially, which 
could really help the value in the mid cap and the small cap arena because those are the stocks when you look at the big market, those are the ones that, are, that really haven't done much. It's the mega caps that have done a lot, right? So the, what he's hopeful is that this could actually have a broad-based market rally because of lower interest rates. And as those interest rates lower, companies will become more and more profitable, potentially. Can't guarantee that, right? Now, the biggest risk that we all have is tax risk. We talked about that in a previous podcast. We talked about it everywhere, which is 16 months from now, we have the sunsetting of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, which means everything, estate taxes, income taxes, everything actually gets higher. Self-employment, people get walloped by it. People that are retired get walloped by it. It is a dramatic increase for most people in their taxes if it just sunsets. And the risk is if tax rates go up even higher, that could put a lot of pressure on corporations. More importantly, it puts pressure on individuals, which could curtail spending because they don't have as much discretionary money, right? So we, we have to look at the big picture of economics. If tax rates go up, and I had shared in a previous episode a concept of a retiree with $160,000 of retirement income and their taxes jump from 16 to 22,000 ballpark range that 5800 to $6,000 is a dramatic reduction in your spending that's 5 6 700 dollars a month and everything else could be going up in that time frame right so what we want to make sure is that we want to make sure that we understand what our own individual risks are and how we mitigate them, tax risk being one of the largest pieces. This interest rate risk is actually relatively high also. And when I talk about it, is if I have an expectation that I'm sitting here with a million dollars in a 5% money market account and that feels good and these interest rates decline, you know, when they decline, if they decline, you could go from 5% to 3%. Meanwhile, you now have inflation risk. Your expenses are driving up. And that ripple effect through the plan means I end up spending down capital, which therefore I run out of money sooner if I'm not properly capitalized and expensed in the whole thing. So this is really important, and I wanted you to see this. I was excited about the presentation because it was a perspective that you know how you enter somewhere and you have one idea of how it's going to go and then you have an open mind and you listen to something and then you get a different perspective? And it's that open mind that I think is really, really important when you're approaching your wealth plan and you're approaching the next couple of months here is how do you have the most open mind and how do I understand how would I be impacted if interest rates decline? How would I be impacted if tax rates go up? How would I be declined if interest rates stay the same? How would I be impacted if interest rates stay the same and taxes go down? You think about it, right? There's all these different inflection points. But what I want you to remember in today's episode is that these are things that are constantly impacting people's plans. You need to understand the basics of how interest rates could impact you, how things are going to happen. And in a wealth plan, we have a tendency to take the current conditions that we're in and extrapolate that into the future as if nothing is going to change. Whether it's a bad outcome currently or it's a really crazy positive outcome, right? We know there's volatility in the markets. We know there's volatility in interest rates. We know there's volatility in tax rates. We know there's volatility in inflation rates. We know there's volatility in healthcare pricing and medical expenses and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do know this. Most people have financial leaks that are transferring wealth away from them. And if we can find where those leaks are, plug those leaks and bring that capital back into your plan, your savings rate increases or your withdrawal rate decreases and you live the same lifestyle, 
that you want, that's a powerful impact. That's what we want to do, okay? Appreciate it. Share this, like this, comment on it. Good comments, bad comments, they're all comments. I love the feedback. Bring them on. Thank you.